All right, so we got this really cool old Yale lock. Uh, it's seeming like from my tryout keys that a Y5 will fit in there. And then in case it's a little bit longer, um, this Ilco 997A will fit in there, but it almost seems too long. So it's gonna be one of the two. We'll at least be able to make sure we can make a key off one of these. I'm thinking this is going to be able to be rekeyable simply because of the uh, two screws right here. But we shall see. We just won't know. This is off of a some sort of antique machine. So whether I was doubting whether we even had the parts to possibly be able to work on this, or whether it was even rekeyable, or whether we could open it up or not. So just the fact that we're at this stage right now um, is a good thing. Let's see here. Unfortunately, we're running into some problems. This screw does not want to come undone. Which is not good. Hmm. And I don't think it's going to come undone, unfortunately. Um, see, we had this screw here in this hole. Right there. Which was here. Uh, but this one is uh, flattened off almost like a like a rivet and then also has all this marking on it. Um, so that tells me that somebody's had this off before. So there's a lot of funky things going on here. At least funky for me. I haven't seen anything like this yet. <clears throat> That'll allow me to turn it at least. <laughs> Basically, just making me a little slot to thread this out, see if that works or not. Well, apparently it's not threaded. Okay. So you're just going to have to pop that out. Pop that out like so, and then yes. It is going to be rekeyable on the back side here. So that's very cool. <clears throat> Pull this out. <clears throat> this lock could have also been impressioned, but on these antique locks, I really don't like to stress them. Uh, impressioning is going to put a severe amount of stress and tension on this lock that I do not particularly want to do. I'm just going to take a hang on this and just set it out as it sits. Okay. It's going to be shimmable or not.
Okay, this one's out of shims. Kind of out of shims. Not exactly out. Pretty haggard. Toss that one. Alrighty. Yeah, let's see. Okay, so I can definitely feel my shim going in there. Get our key blank. And we're just gonna shim pick this lock. Cause it was kind of a miserable son of a gun to pick initially. There we go. She picked. It's now cammed over. Now take our shim out. And let's see. A little pieces I've got to maybe possibly find something to fix. Lock and kit. Now let's see if that's going to work. Okay. So we have a four pin lock right there. So that means that our Y5. It definitely, it definitely will meet it. Okay, Y5. Let's see if we get another one. Y5. Bingo. I'll pop two of these off because the customer will probably want another one. So if we wanted to rekey this, it does appear as though little baby master lock pins would probably work in here just for fun, for future reference. Trying this out. Yeah, a little a master pin, master lock pin kit will work for this. Um, if you ever need to do so. So to hand file this key in, basically I'm going to do this the easy way. And just hand file it in a vise. I'll try and show that as best as possible here. Basically I'm going to put this key blank in the vise. <clears throat> put one on the other side to keep it straight. And then I'm going to push it flat, like so. And then <clears throat> tighten that down. Now what I'm going to do is take this out. And I see that the... Let me get this nice and close here. <clears throat> if we can. Okay. We can see that this pin is flat. These three are the ones that we need to work on. So we'll pull that off, put that right there, and that's going to give us the line for cutting. Make a mark. This is going to give us our spacing. A more professional word I use this. Let's see where we're at. So basically we're just going to push that on there. And not lose the pins and then pull back out Let's see where we're at so you can see what I'm doing there this one is almost flat now and so is the first one I just need a little bit more Okay, just a tiny bit more. 
Also, we're starting to peak, so it's starting to catch on here. So we need to smooth the entire key out. Like this, and take those peaks off of there without messing up that last one. So we're getting real close. You can see. bit more so now we can see that we're up on these two maybe just a tiny bit more on that one and a little bit more on the middle a little bit more on the middle and take those peaks down and voila we have a key. Okay, I'm just gonna run this on my brush. Just to smooth anything out. <clears throat> now, that most definitely operate nicely in there. Go ahead and getting mad at me. Okay, so we're going to take our key. Bingo. And run it back down in here. Beautiful. Locked and unlocked. All right. So now we're gonna set this back here. Put this whole thing back together. And then we got this. Okay. This needs to go back here. This needs to go back here. Under this little spring. Uh -huh. Like so. And this tailpiece needs to go back on here. many little parts pieces flying everywhere here Thank <sighs> you. 
Alrighty, so let's try our key out and see what it does. And it pushes that up, and then it brings it back down. Okay, very good. Is getting very impatient with me. Okay, so I just want to make sure that that's going to work. Locked and unlocked. Locked, unlocked. Okay, yes, very good. Okay. So we'll just use our light here. Sorry about that. I don't have time to go start the truck right now. Okay, so that's kind of where did that other screw go? screw is going to be enough to hold it uh, we can get another screw we could get another screw and put it through here uh, and tap and thread that that's probably what I will do but that will be boring so we can definitely see that this operates functionally comes in comes out on off and you can remove the key and that's pretty much that we'll go from there so that's how we can rekey this there is a code on here three two four three um, just for fun, if anybody wants to see that or take a look at it. Um, but if you ever run across one of these, just old stuff on old lock on an old uh, furniture. Uh, I think this was a some kind of music machine or something. Uh, but that's what's going to be involved with it. Um, like once again, you could impression this too, uh, but you do run that risk of bending some of the brass parts uh, or or you know snapping some of the springs or doing something uh, kind of goofy like that. So for more information, check out the website below.